on everybody Boris here at your college of design studio back again for the second episode of this learn along where together we'll learn Java programming I apologize for the audio issues we had yesterday this should be a lot better although it's probably kind of quiet so pump up the volume I'll show you some neat stuff today it was a blast working on this episode today we'll use counter controlled repetition to input fuel prices one at a time We'll use a counter or a control variable to control the number of times a set of statements execute. Let's get started. First, we want to do something about the terribly small font I had yesterday. Before we do that, let's open a new project, Control Shift N, or you can click this button here. Java application next, we want to call it Fuel Price. Finish. I've made my font size a lot bigger so that it's easy for you guys to see. The way I did this is I went to Tools, Options, over here in Fonts and Colors, Syntax, where it says Font, Modem Space 32. I clicked on these three little dots and then you have Font, Font, font Style, and Size. The size I set to 32. Okay, and we're going to need two files fuelprice.java and let's click on this right here new file we want a java main class next and we want to call this fuel price if, you, if we stop there you see that the fuelprice.java already exists we want to call this test okay and let's click finish fuel price test now we have both files that we require for this program and I'm going to explain each line using the comment system and then at the end of the video we're going to go through the program and through any errors we encounter in great details but for now comments will have to suffice let's clean it up a little bit and let's start with fuelprice.java that's the first document we're going to work on let's get started let's delete some of these unnecessary comments here we don't need these comments in specific we'll make our own as always the first line we want to be package this one is referencing package fuel price okay package fuel price let's do a comment fuel price class that averages fuel cost using counter controlled repetition forgive me I can't speak and write at the same time I get confused so you may hear me delay a little bit between tasks I'll try to improve on that in the future but we'll see and now we want to remember yesterday how we imported uh, classes from already existing Java libraries we're going to do the exact same thing actually import java.util dot scanner and a little warning message pops up here as you can see unused import it's telling us that we've imported this but we're not really doing anything with it the program won't break or you know we won't have any syntax errors or anything it'll still run but it's just telling us that we have unnecessary code we will use this later on okay let's make a comment here program uses class scanner which allows us to get things like user input or data from an external source okay public class fuel price and let's get in the good habit of opening and closing brackets in the very beginning private private string course name name of owner you might be wondering why I didn't just call it owner name well I don't know I called it course name at first I was thinking I was I was looking at a program that already exists online that does grades and I got kind of got confused I wanted to do fuel so I went with fuel but then the name kind of just stuck in my head so we'll call it course name for now if you want just you can try replacing course name with owner name okay name of owner 
New comment. Constructor initializes course name. Now that we've set a private string called course name, we have to initialize it. And then we have to set a method um, to set the course name and then we have to retrieve the course name. So we're going to do all that in sequence. Okay. Let's see, public fuel price string name. That's going to need opening and closing brackets too. We have an error down here. It says duplicate class fuel price dot fuel price. Looks like we didn't delete everything. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's delete this. We don't need this class here. And we don't need public static void main. I know I remember I told you that every one of our programs is going to start with this, and it will. But it will start with the second file, fuel price test. That's where we're going to have our public static void main. So let's delete this. Okay, error is gone. Fuel price, string name, opening, closing bracket. Let's indent. And then let's do course name equals name. Initialize this course name. Here we're we're ending the constructor. Now let's do a method to set the course name. Public void set course name string name. Again, opening and closing brackets. Okay, we've declared a public void set course name, string name, course name equals name. This stores the course name and then we're ending our method. I remember from the previous video, our definition of void, that it does not return anything. Okay, new line. We have to get the course name, now we have to retrieve it. Actually, let's do a comment. Method to I should say the owner, that way we don't get confused. Method to retrieve the owner name. In the second file we'll see you know, exactly what the owner name is and exactly what's going on. Method to retrieve the owner name. Public string get course name. Opening and closing brackets. return course name and then we end the method get course name okay new line let's see where are we let's display now a welcome message to the fuel price user so Display our oh, welcome message user. And we're going to do this by public void display message. Whoops. Okay. We want to do
this is where it gets interesting this is where we call on the other file to retrieve the name of the owner and the name of the owner will be set in fuel price test java so and on line 27 we're going to do system dot out dot print f whoops quotations parentheses and then quotations fuel cost record for forward slash n percent s exclamation mark forward slash n forward slash n so what we just did is fuel cost record space string placeholder space space and here let's do comma get course name parentheses and then we end the method display message so what this does is it prints the following fuel cost record etc and then it has a string placeholder for you know text and then it goes and gets the course name and plugs the course name here we'll see how this works out when we compile and run the program now we want to determine the cost average of our fuel purchases whether it's for an individual or for a company let's determine class average based on 10 purchases entered by user public void determine cost average opening and closing brackets and here let's do create create scanner to obtain input from command window and here is where we use the scanner class we just imported from the Java libraries so let's go ahead let me scroll down a little bit that's better we want to do scanner input equals new scanner system dot in dot in this should look familiar we did that in the last video and it's the exact same line scanner input equals new scanner so a new format of uh, getting data and it's going to be user input and now just like last time we declare our variables and they're going to be integers the same as last time integer total sum of costs entered by user and price counter this is a our counter variable we'll use this to control how many times the user can enter data in and we're going to set it to 10 so the user can enter 10 purchases so say in one month they've purchased fuel for 11 times well they'll only be able to enter 10 of those times and then the program is going to average the cost for those 10 times and perhaps using this we can extrapolate how much they spent on the 11th time integer price counter number of the price to be entered next and price price value entered by user and average We should say cost average for cl to be clear or average cost okay and here let's do initiation phase total equals zero we started at zero let's not forget our semicolon
and do price counter equals one. We're initializing our loop counter. So it starts at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it should end. And the way we do this is in the processing phase. And we're going to have a while loop. We're going to learn more about while and if loops. For now, let's do a while loop. So while the price counter is less than 10. And let me pause here really quick and say that the way we can write these programs easier is by speaking out loud. So we have a problem and we want to solve it using a program, right? So we want to create a while loop. The way the way we do this is we think about, you know, okay, how many times we want that to last how many costs do we want the user to input say for example we want 20 and then we say well while the price counter is less than 20 do this and when that stops do something else this is essentially what we're doing here while the price counter is less than 10 we're looping 10 times uh, loop 10 times Actually, let's not put a comment here. Let's do this. All right. Okay. And then let's do. Oh, let's not forget our closing bracket. System dot out dot print. Enter price. That's our prompt the user prompt price equals input dot next int remember the last time if we do int all capital it will not work so let's do capital i lowercase n t parentheses semicolon read price from user total equals total plus price add price to total price counter equals price counter plus one this is how we keep track increment counter by one so whatever the price counter is, at every execution of the while loop, we add one. So once the user enters the first number, it's one plus one, two, two plus one, three, and so on and so forth until we reach the 10th execution. At which point the program sees while price counter, it evaluates the statement if it's true. So price counter, if it's equal or greater than 10, it will not execute this code, this while loop is only executed by the program if this uh, if this statement holds true. So if the price counter is less than 10, then do the, this. Else, and it's a hidden else, we don't really need to have it, else do nothing. Okay, and end while, we're ending our while loop. Our termination phase, Average equals total divided by 10. So basically, average is the sum divided. That's why we needed a total. Average is equal to the sum divided by the number of variables. So we have 10 variables. We've calculated our sum, and we're dividing by 10, the number of our variables. And we have integers. We're dividing by integers and we're going to get an integer result. So let's display the total and the average of our prices. Display total and total and average prices. System dot out dot print F
Remember that percent %d is a decimal placeholder, or not a decimal placeholder, but a numerical placeholder for integer values. Let's not forget our semicolon. New line system dot out dot print f and let's do cost we forgot something on the previous line we have to do comma total that's how it knows what to input here in this placeholder and then here we need to do comma average semicolon and we should have two, I think. We need to end method, end method determine cost average, and end class fuel price. Let's see. This bracket matches up with fuel price. What does this bracket do right here in the very end? We have an error. It's saying class interface or enum expected. Which one does that match? That doesn't really match with anything. So it's a leftover bracket, which means we don't need it. We can delete it. That's why it's important to keep track of uh, all your brackets and all your semicolons. We want to end class fuel price. And that's it for this document. Let's review what we've done. Line one, we have our package. We're declaring where our package is. We're pulling the information of our classes there. We're importing the class scanner so that we can receive user input. We're declaring a public class called fuel price. Again, capitalization is important. So we're basically referencing this document here. We're creating a private string course name or owner name, whichever you prefer. We're initializing the course name here, public fuel price string name, course name equals name. We're setting it, method to set course name, public void, set course name, string name, course name equals name. Then we have a method to retrieve the owner name, public string, get course name, return course name. Line 25, public void, display message. This is our display message, fuel cost record for blank, get course name, which again will be in the second document. Line 31 on down, public void determine cost average. This is our biggest um, declaration so far. Here's where we put in the scanner input, where we declare our variables, total, price counter, price, and average. In the initiation phase, we initiate the total equals to zero and the price counter equals to one. In the processing phase, we're saying, while the price counter is less than 10, so say for example we did price counter equals to 11. Well, this wouldn't work because we're in the initiation phase, we're setting the value larger than what it is in our, uh, what is expected in our while loop. So every time this program executes, every time it reads through all the lines, and it's going to keep doing that as long as this statement is true, it's going to say while price counter is less than 10, do this. And then when it reaches 10, it's going to end the while loop. So while it's less than 10, it's going to print out enter price and it's going to prompt the user for the price that they paid for fuel. We should say enter fuel cost. Let's change that. Enter fuel cost. A little more descriptive. Enter fuel cost. Price equals input dot next and next integer. Reads the price from the user. Total equals total plus, uh, plus price. Price counter, uh, price counter plus one. And then we terminate. This is our termination phase. Average equals total divided by 10. And that gives a, that spits out our average once we obtain our total. And then we display the results, the total of all 10 prices, you know, the total cost for fuel. And we say, yeah, that's actually a better idea. Instead of saying the total of all 10 prices, total of all fuel purchases, fuel purchases is this and then we're referencing total here system dot out dot print f cost average is average where we calculated it over here so we're referencing here alternatively remember we can do parentheses and we can do total divided by 10 etc etc let's not do that i haven't actually experimented with that but i think it's possible we want to reference average that's what we're looking for okay Let's go to the second document, fuelpricetest.java. Again, let's begin by cleaning up all these comments that we don't need. 
Let's delete this one and this one. But we're going to need the majority of what's written in here because this is our main class and we're going to need the public static void main string args. Of course, line one, package fuel price and then create fuel price object and invoke its cost average method. Okay, let's do, yep, public class, fuel price test. We already have this. And as you can see, NetBeans is nice enough to highlight for us where our brackets are. Let's go ahead and mark them as end fuel price test. And then this here, end main. Okay, on this line, let's do, let's indent. My public static void main and we start typing here create fuel price object my fuel price and pass owner name to constructor if you remember in the previous file is where we had a constructor let's go back to that and take a look really quick where is our constructor somewhere over here constructor initializes course name so it's going to pass this to the constructor let's see fuel price my fuel price equals new fuel price let's do Arcology Designs Studio. Okay. Now it's going to, I think it's going to put an exclamation mark at the end. And here's how I know this Arcology Design Studio, nothing here. But if we go to this document here, let's look at the formatting percent %s exclamation mark. So it's going to put in Arcology Designs here and then it's going to add an exclamation mark at the very end. So let's go back to it. And what do we need? What are we missing? We're missing a semicolon. See, if, if we don't put a semicolon, NetBeans is telling us semicolon expected. Wow, that's actually very explicit. May split declaration into a declaration and assignment. Perfect. So NetBeans actually tells us if we're missing a semicolon. So let's add it my fuel price dot display message display displays message if you remember display message was over here public void oh that's convenient public void display message so that's what that is and we're putting this in our main class because it's referencing it. My fuel price dot display message displays the message. On the next line, we do my fuel price determine cost average. You can also click enter since it's highlighting it here. It's remembering that we created that class. And it adds the semicolon. <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that because, see, I mean, I type in this. And it automatically types the other one. And then when I press the other one, it automatically adds a semicolon. It's nice, but sometimes it confuses me and it adds in you know something like that. And then I might miss it if I'm not careful. This one, find average of 10 costs, 10 prices, 10 fuel prices. And main and class, let's say class. And class fuel price test. Let's review. Package fuel price, referencing this package here, creates fuel price object and invokes its cost average method. Let's delete some of this white space. Public class fuel price test, public static void main, because this is our main, you know, main class in this program. We're creating the fuel price object called my fuel price, and we're passing the owner name, Arcology Design Studio, to the constructor. If we go to the constructor, we see that the name is going to be passed and imported here. And 
it, the, we're going to add an exclamation mark to make it more exciting. My fuel price dot display message displays the message. My fuel price determine cost average finds the average of the 10 costs. And we see that we have both of these classes declared in our other file, display message and determine cost average. We have display message and determine cost average. So when we're invoking this in our main class, we're basically taking all of this here and we're doing it here. And let's see if it runs. I'm not seeing any errors on any of the lines. It's looking good, it's looking very good. I can't tell you how long it took me to get this to work. It may seem like a simple program, but as I said before, I don't really have a lot of programming experience with Java. I have some limited experience. Majority of my experience is you know, XHTML, HTML, CSS, and web design and web development. So let's see if this works. Let's go to our main class and let's run it. Let's run the project. Fuel price is giving us a message. Fuel price dot fuel price class wasn't found in fuel price project. Select the main class. All right, well, yeah, it's not gonna find it there because it's looking for it here, but it's not gonna find it. It's going to find the main class, which is declared properly in fuel price test. So let's select this, click OK. It's running it. And success on the first run. Look at that, well, not really the first run. Hopefully it's your first run, but for me it's run, I've lost count. And it's working, fuel cost record for Arcology Design Studio. See, there you go, I told you about the exclamation mark. This is exactly what it did. It went, it took our college design studio and it inputted it here. Let's find it. There it is. There's the exclamation mark that we're seeing. Where is running? Oh, by the way, here is another fun fact. If you click this button and run the program, it's going to continue running down here in the bottom. See how it says fuel price run running? We can stop that because it's sucking up some of our you know, processor and all that, especially if it's a big program. We can click on this X here. And are you sure you want to cancel fuel price run? Yes. There's another way to do this. Let's run the program again by clicking this stop button here. We don't want to do that though. Let's, let's do something. Let's enter the fuel costs and execute this program. So what should the first one be? Let's do 10. Okay, it's executing the while loop, it's checking, is it less than 10? If yes, prompt the user for a new price. It's less than 10, so it's asking us for a new price. Let's do 12, and then let's do 14, 16, 14, 17. I don't know, I'm just making numbers up as I'm going along. 15, nine, those prices are very low, by the way. Uh, we're talking like 1990s if you're buying fuel during that era. A, right now it'd probably be like 45 or $50 per fuel purchase. Let's do 25. Maybe we borrowed the company van or something. Total of all fuel purchases is 140. What we could have done to make this even more user-friendly is added a dollar sign and our formatting in a display message. So this would have display total of all fuel purchases is $140. That way the user knows exactly what this these units mean. Cost average is 14. Again, we can we could have added a, a dollar sign and let's actually add a dollar sign. Why not? Let's make this a user-friendly program. Let's find out how we can add a dollar sign. Okay, I've closed the program running. We're not executing it anymore. And let's add a dollar sign. So we're in fuel price Java. Let's go all the way down. We don't want this message. We want these last two messages. Total of all fuel purchases is space dollar sign space this. I want to leave a space between the numbers. That way it's nice and clean. And then on the second one, cost average is dollar sign. Could it really be this easy? Let's find out. Let's do run. And it's running, no errors, nothing. Let's see if it outputs a dollar sign as we expect it to. Let's do more realistic prices this time. Let's do like 45, 55, 70, 50, 40, 42, 47, 90. And in later tutorials, we'll find out how to do floating uh, variables and that way we can have decimals at the end. Let's finish this for now. 
Let's do 80. Okay, there it is. We have dollar signs. This is, I like this a lot better. And then now that the user has inputted everything, they know exactly what's going on. You know, the total of all fuel purchases is $573. Cost average is $57. So on average, we spent $57. And throughout the whole month, or let's say the first quarter, this is the first quarter, January through March, we've spent $573 on fuel. In the next video, we're going to take a break from writing code very briefly and focus on theory. We're going to take a look at pseudocode else if and while loops and a few more details that we've kind of glossed over because we've been focusing on writing some code and understanding how to declare classes how to import classes from java libraries how to create uh, how to obtain user input display it print things out you know the practical application of concepts and in the next section we're going to review the theoretical concepts that we've that we've gone over well, guys, this brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on our Ecology Designs production. What's going on, everybody? Boris here at your Ecology Design Studio, and I have an idea I want to tell you all about. What's up, everybody? This is Boris at your Ecology Design Studio. Today, we're talking about computer, specifically some of the components that it takes to build a personal computer.